game one. It shows up in game two, gets that victory for them. And in game number three, it will be removed off the board. Gigabyte Marines actually adapting through this stage of the bands. That means some champions go missing through the initial part of the band phase. The Varus is left up, but Lulu, that had been taken by the Gigabyte Marines for a while here, it's going to get locked in by Supermassive, likely into the hands of Dumble Doge. And this is where, once again, you're expecting the response to be the Gragas, but do they go for the Karma with it? That's the question to me. I much prefer what Supermassive have done this time by picking themselves the Lulu. In saying that, they didn't pick the Ash as their first rotation. Instead, Slay is actually going to nab it. Now it exactly. goes over. Once again, is the Gragas going to get locked in? This might mean we get the early rumble out. Exactly right. So Lulu, the adaptation from Supermassive. Ash always going to be responded. Slay has been a pretty good Ash player for the team, but as has Zeitnot. So honestly, it could just be the highest priority champion that now goes to waste. But Varus exists. And so Ash, whilst she exists, has longer range on her engage tools. If Zeitnot picks the Varus and is nearby his team, can be supported, can still be an engaged tool similar to that of an Ash. Yep, locks it in now. So a little bit more comfort there for Zeitnot now. What does Supermassive finish off their first pick phase with? Well, we see the Rumble locked in here. If not, it should almost certainly be banned away by the Gigabyte Marines. You'd be expecting a jungler to be looked at, a higher priority jungle. Once again, the Lee Sin with Ivern off the board. If you're taking something like that away from Levi, this is also another pick to take from him. Remember, it was banned in the second game after a loss to it. So it's a very valid pick. Now, do they lock a jungler into their own? Last time Kha'Zix was let through. Ended up... Levi, not quite as effective on it early on because he kind of got set back by what Stone Mage was doing on that Ivern, but he's still pretty potent and he was still able to find threats. But instead, it's the early Syndra lock-in for Optimus. Okay, so they rotate their Syndra before the second band phase. I like that they have a priority on it still. We've already seen Nairu play Jace, be pretty fine into the champion. You know, it didn't outright win the laning phase. And we still look towards junglers just that little bit more so if you were the Marines, whereas super massive. They still need to get their top laner and rightly banned from him. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Rumble's off the table now, so Fab Fabulous will be looking for something a little bit different. We might see the Nautilus coming back in, as you say. We'll see, as the band's over in their book, they take the Karma off the board. And that's what I expected to be seen as the third pick for Optimus, which is why I'm a little bit surprised the Syndra was immediately locked in. Karma already displayed the ability to be a flex pick for the team. But instead, it's going to be removed off the board. This does leave open an abundance of junglers, however. And Stone Mage, whilst he's good on the graves, do you really want to give Levi the lease in? Well, Gigabyte Marines on their side are thinking back the last series, the Fizz banned away. Shen exists currently. For the it, first time in the series. Yeah, first time it's up. They get rid of the Fizz, but Shen's also a pretty good champion. Yeah, they banned the lease in away, and now with Gigabyte Marines, what they lock in, be the Shen into the Gragas easily up in the top. And there's nothing really there for the Gigabyte Marines unless they pick the Shen now and prevent it. Actually have Archie pick up the Gragas as the support. Do something they, they can look towards. Decisions have to be made. 10 seconds for Gigabyte Marines to lock in their next choice before it heads back over. It's got to be the Kha'Zix. Yeah, this still makes sense. Levi is an outstanding Kha'Zix player. He's going to be into the Graves. Not an easy jungler to go and find. He jungles a little bit faster than that of a Kha'Zix, to say the least. But for what it's worth, he has looked outstanding. It just means there's a lot less support coming into the third game to protect Levi. Almost non-existent support compared to the last two. Mm -hmm. Super massive timer ticking for their last picks. We could expect to see the Shen up in here. It's going to be an Echo locked in for Naru, though. This is something that's been a little bit more comfortable for him. A couple of plays during the earlier parts of the play-in stage, and there is your Shen locked in for Fab Fabulous. Yeah, it took an extra couple of rotations in the draft, but they have to reveal everything here. So Supermassive, they lock themselves the Shen, someone that can get around the map very quickly. Does quite all right in the top lane as well. Will be able to survive decently fine against a Gragas. A little bit of early push going to be a problem for him as we're rounding out the draft. Yep, Zyra final lock in here. With Gigabyte Marines, Archie picks that one up, and now they have the Ash Zyra lane that Supermassive will bring in game number one, but very different Bottom lane for Super Massive as the Varus and the Lulu both fell to them. And, well, a team that not maybe this series, but typically had played around its AD carry. This is looking pretty protection. Yeah, it definitely is. Super Massive, you'd have to say, have compiled themselves a decent team composition for the type of game that they want to play. Naru can go absolutely insane when he gets that Echo rotating around the map, trying to hard push. But he's against the Syndra, so that's not that simple. However, Gigabyte Marines, their bottom lane has honestly exceeded expectations 
coming into this series. You'd say that's the one place where Zytnot and Dumbledoge would be favored in the 2v2, but so far, even in just the laning phase, you'd still actually give it over to Slay and Archie, and for no particular reason, they've now just shown up to play in this series. This could actually start to be a, a potential problem for Supermassive moving forward, especially if they're going to draft themselves something a little bit more around you know, keeping the AD alive. Yeah, other people are going to have to start stepping up, though, if the dual lane is not going to be able to do it as much. We've seen it out of Stonemage. We've seen it out of Naru. Last game, hell, we saw it out of Fab Fabulous, and that could very well be the case again. But on a Shen, he's definitely much more defensively minded. At one to one, the series can still go either way. Start of the day we were talking, I predicted five games and a lot of action. So far, I'm on track, Rusty. What do you think this one's going to go? This is a very tough one, Nicole Pyra. Still conflicting styles to be seen. The Kha'Zix, you have to like it. Onto Levi, they've got the Syndra for Optimus and he has looked outstanding. But for me, it's all about the jungle. It's all about the early game, how things actually start on the rift. Well, we're about to find out as we load up onto Summoner's third time today. Gigabyte Marines out the gates versus Supermassive, looking to fire back, looking to get themselves up two and one, put themselves within reach of Rio de Janeiro. And finally, that inkling of momentum actually creeps into the super massive roster. It's been four defeats in a row, all of them convincing, but they get their first victory in quite a while. And with this momentum, you have to wonder, will it be enough to actually help assist them, get them over the line, start them on the, on the right foot? Zeit not Dumbledore, they haven't been having the best performance. We mentioned this, but what if having that victory now gives them the confidence that they need? What if this matchup now, having the Varus, having the Lulu in a very equal footing type of lane, if they can hold against the push, just don't lose too much health under that turret, they might actually be fine. Momentum, very important thing. In high stakes matches like these, and Supermassive are no stranger to a big stage. You know, I remember what happened the last year, Dumble Doge, the uh, earning the Faker Killer title. It's a proud thing for a lot of players. He wants a chance to do it again. Yeah, he definitely just played Janner in auto attack to steal the kill. Don't but give the details. It's okay. Everybody remembers the story. Can we call him Faker Slayer? <laughs> the killer of gods. Uh, well, it's going to be a solid group stage no matter who walks away with the victory. Both these teams are showing they definitely came to play today. So Archie and Slay showing a lot of respect as well, not actually walking into the bottom lane, not going into the brush, just sitting back. It means they're not going to win lane at level one as Optimus actually gives him a leash. What a kind guy. I know. Oh, not no, he, he but he steals right. a few away. Still Mage might be in trouble he here. Might actually. The Raptor is doing a lot of work, and now Naru's coming in. Smite for the health, instant ignite. But Optimus, he's pushed too far forward. In comes Naru, Time Winder. This is awkward. Away. Where are you going to go? Wrong side. Use the explosive plan. All right, here All we right, go. Optimus. Here we go. He's giving him the runaround. <laughs> not enough, though. <laughs> this time he gets hit. Time Winder. Naru's uh, at mean, that. All right. Got him. All right. <laughs> We're on the board. I don't understand how that actually happened. Naru's going to have teleport as well. So not only does he get the first blood, he's going to go back to base, probably going to buy another ring, teleport into the lane. That's the left, right. Good night. See you later, Optimus. Have fun in your laning phase, buddy. Yeah, that was very uncharacteristic. Optimus goes for the aggressive play, but he hard commits to it, gets the ignite on. So, okay, so Stone Mage has slowed down a bit, gives Levi a chance, but now you've given the kill over to the mid laner. Naru's fed. Naru is very fed. If you want to compare and contrast the levels of strength that mid laners currently present themselves, Naru is level 3 to 1. Optimus is going to have a pretty rough time. Just a little bit. He's actually going to be... Naru, where that is, going to be going a little bit on a roam just for a second, starting things off. See if they can keep the vision locked down. And like clockwork, we have ourselves a very important dragon to start things off. It's actually the mountain instead of the Infernal this time. A lot of helpful power pushing objective damage as Stone Mage trades jungle with Levi. Back up in the top side now as he'd already cleared out. Yeah, he's making the right decision, right? Levi definitely was going to invade. You'd almost expect that if someone's pushing up my Raptors at level one, Levi knows that he has the health advantage. This is what happened in game number one to actually cheese out Stone Mage a bit. As he's actually found Naru. Oh, he didn't get over the wall. Ooh, has to flash followed by Levi and Optimus. With a little bit of help from his jungler, fires back. These are those moments that just should never happen on Summoner's Rift. Levi just happens to be there as the Echo wards. He dashes into the wall. He should not be dead. He is dead. And just like that, that was not meant to be a laning phase where Optimus is going to have a good time. But he's having a great time again. He got a kill. He's loving it. All right, one, one. Donald's. Both the junglers. Definitely looking tasty. 
Uh, Zaitan on Double Dudge were pushing in the bottom side. It's been a much quieter affair down bottom for the time being, but that could change now. Levi is up in the top, but he's just clearing away his own Krugs, and we'll take a look at that play again as Naro, unfortunate time. Yeah, he was actually on the wall, but he picked, I think, the thickest part that he possibly could of that wall to dash through. Could have flashed, could have taken the safe route. That's exactly the face that you have to make, unfortunately, when you make mistakes like that. And remember the stakes. Not only was it a costly one that killed him, it's to get to MSI. A big stage at MSI, to be sure. A lot of time on this one in Sao Paulo, but they want to be able to move on to the next. Teleport now for Stark as he heads back up to the top. Losing out in farm against Fab Fabulous, but no stranger to that after what happened last game. All the same, it's pretty even now after the return kill. Yeah, surprisingly so, I think you'd have to say here, Pyra. Does it? Oh, Ooh, yeah, it does. Just enough to interrupt. Nailed it. Uh, That's how you know he's an echo timewinder. Optimus delayed recalls means it's still the advantage, whilst it should have been a bit more, is still there for Naru. He has the experience edge well and truly, and he can go back and reset himself one more time. We still look, though, whilst the mid lane is a reasonably equal when it shouldn't have been to the junglers, because Levi was there to pick up that kill, has the CS advantage, has an experience advantage, and the sooner he gets the six, the sooner people start dying. True. That's when things start going that way. Levi last time was kind of held back a little bit, courtesy of Stone Aged. Fab Fabulous getting off early kills as he was trying to get the invade in. It's a very different type of game now, once again. Fab Fabulous. And Stark, still on level five, teleports both burn, so we'll not see the early action. Really only gonna be about those outplays in the lane, but it's nice to see Zaitnon and Double Doge kind of holding their own a little bit better than we saw earlier in the series. Yeah. Not dominating, but holding their own. But nobody's losing in the 2v2 anymore, and that's important. Zaitnot, he's meant to be the carry that gets Blade of the Ruined King, and then has the Lulu protect him, and they just get through laning phase okay. He's never really the all-in, win 2v2 lanes. It's usually just because someone was coming at him that they would be. They're also against an Ash and a Zyra, so their job is not really to just outright win the 2v2, so to speak. It's just to survive, get to the level 6 point, and then it's all about who can use their ultimates better out of both of these 2v2s. Varus and Ash can just rotate those as they please to try and force summoner spells out of their opponents and then bring the jungler down. Well, we've already seen from last game, Zaitnot's definitely more than capable of dodging those skill shots. But that's a bigger hitbox on the Ash Arrow. We'll see once the fights start up. It's still 5-5 five to five on everybody. Dumbledore's only at level 4, actually. But the mid laners are the ones that hit that level 6 mark a little bit earlier. That's dangerous if you're dealing with Optimus. Well, so does Ignite Levi, flash actually. Both up. Yeah, Levi hits it, too. At the same time as his solo laners, as is Kha'Zix. Well, as is Levi, really, not Kha'Zix. He gets to evolve, I believe, his Q from what we saw of him for just a second. He's going to be doing a lot of work onto those objectives now. He's jungle clear becomes better. That was done just for help. Yeah. Optimus got the ult off, but it kind of just blocked by Naru for a second there. Levi coming in and around, but he's going to get spotted. But that's the matchup as well, right? Syndra uses ultimate, Echo uses ultimate. Both of them stay at full health. It just means there's no ultimates there. So you diffuse a lane where most other champions would and just outright lose. However, whenever the Echo ults, it's oh, okay, hello. Slay, that's gonna be Dumble Doge with the kill. Now Archie's isolated by himself. That was a lot of summoners burned too. Flashes on both sides. Meanwhile, all of a sudden, they just crack it open. Stark taking damage. Stone Mage dealing with Levi, and he even smites the blue back in a way. So super massive, kind of getting the lion's share of all those trades. Yeah, they're actually handling Gigabyte Marines exceptionally well right now. The bottom lane getting the kill. Something that you wouldn't have expected to happen between games one and two, but here we are. The third game changed draft and suddenly changed results down here right now. Archie's just left to pick up the scraps. We get to see how this all happens. Again, it's a level five to six advantage. This isn't something crazy and unexpected to be seen, but really good movements honestly from Supermassive using the experience advantage pushing it and generating a kill from that mistake from the Marines yeah small ones but they can be punished Supermassive showing up once again the gold advantage is theirs they have vision throughout this river right now you see Gigabyte Marines not keen on giving a whole lot up but now it's Levi up in the top looking for no, Fab here. Fabulous who's got the taunt this is dangerous yeah it shouldn't do that not against the Shen He's and there's a ward down too. Yeah, modded, Levi knows yeah. the game is up. Nothing doing. Now, Fab Fabulous was poked out of lane a fair bit, so his health was lacking, right? Like, there's merit into diving this, but you'd have to imagine that the actual goal is to bring Optimus 
and not just to dive the top laner, but to pressure him off the turret, but against the Shen, he has a taunt. So if you try and pressure a Shen off the turret, you have to kill him, or he'll actually make you tank the turret and you die. There is no in-between against the Shen lane. Levo was thinking about it. You can see as he hesitated, he went back in, he turns back around. All of a sudden, Snow Mage was coming there, so that was about it. Instead, he settles for a red buff. And so the window of opportunity does close. The Levi's able to go get his red, go back to base, buy a lot of damage. I think it's safe to say if he had that item, he may have dove. Yep, neither jungler on boots, but still mobile enough as it is. Waiting for those item spikes, that's always going to be the name of the game when you're talking about the junglers, when you're talking about the mid lanes. Naru gets the early boots, actually. Merc Treads just try and keep Optimus from you know, dishing too much damage and getting too much CC layered on top of him. It's also super important to note that the Kha'Zix evolving his Q also against a Mountain Drake, one of the easiest Drakes to secure, especially for a Kha'Zix. Mid laners having it out. Here we go. Face diving in. Naru, though, it's not a 1v1. In comes Levi, but that's a quick chrono break out from Naru to keep himself alive. Start oh, coming in. Belly pop. Down. There he goes. He's got the Shen Shield on. Fab Fabulous coming in. They're pulling the trigger. See if they make the play right now, but super massive. They were able to slip away. Stark, Levi, Archie all having to run off. That is three ultimates burnt now by the side of super massive. Syndra actually keeps his. Stark is caught. He should be fine. This is all about defending the turret. And the Drake is where the vision was for the Gigabyte Marine. So Optimus was pushing in, and rightly so. But the numbers immediately turn around. This is just what a Shen does to you. He's able to defuse any kind of bad situation and make it favorable. And he's got the teleport advantage now. As Stark had to use his to get involved in that fight. Fab Fabulous on the ultimate, a little shorter cooldown. And he has the TP to boot. Levi wants to make sure that this dragon wouldn't go uncontested, taking away the Scuttle Crab. As Stomage backs to base, slower, controlled. That's the way Supermassive want to play this game, just like the last time, keeping Gigabyte Marines from getting too much in the engages, holding them to one kill at 11 minutes. Which is good, slowing the pace of the early game is exactly what you want to be doing against this team, controlling them. That's why Ivan is the perfect counter to the Southeast Asian region. At the moment, as it stands, the whole server of Vietnam, a very aggressive server, admirably so, but there are definitely ways to best it. And we're seeing in action how you can. Well, you know all about aggressive uh, regions of League of Legends, Rusty. I cast the LPR, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. No, it's all rotations, all the way. <laughs> Well, speaking from a European LCS perspective, Supermassive playing this one control, playing this one slow. We've seen a number of teams that are able to do that one. Don't take the big advantages. Famously, G2, the other European team at this tournament, of course, they definitely have stated they do want to make these over-aggressive plays that are 50-50s. They play in their advantages. Supermassive, not quite that control, but it has been good to see them kind of holding off when it's an uncertain situation. I mean, not a lot of teams do that. Team in this tournament to being what we would define as controlled, right? So. Still starting to see signs of that throughout this entire tournament and this best of five in particular right now. But all of the pressure still mounting towards this bottle main. Remember the summoners that were burned before? They're actually all back up and available. That's why everyone was fighting in the bottle main river. Not just looking for a mountain drake. That's what you take after the fight, especially for the marines. But if they can find those engages, use the ash arrow. Syndra has picked. Kha'Zix has a ridiculous amount of damage. And Zyra's follow-up slash engage is also incredible. There are ways in. But... Fab Fabulous gets the taunt off. In comes Levi. They're trying to gank the teleport, but meanwhile, Tower falls and Fab Fabulous is able to flash away. Levi is coming in. Now, a teleport coming from Naru is going to force Stark and Levi to back off. Nicely played by Supermassive. They get the tower, they stay alive, and they're looking for Dragon. Yeah, very simple plays, honestly, out of the TCL side here. Just going for the bottom lane turret, having the 2v2 pressure. Bring Stone Mage in. Push Slay and Archie away. The reason that they can see the turret, they give it up, is quite simply because their jungler is trying to dive a Shen. We already spoke about what it means to try and dive a Shen, and that you don't have a good time when you're actually doing it. So there's a turret, there's a Drake, there's constant pressure in the middle lane. Everything is unfolding perfectly for Supermassive. This is exactly how the TCL side were able to get ahead last game. A little bit more jungle pressure, perhaps, countering what Levi was doing. But on this Kha'Zix, once again, he's not been able to find much more. However, if he does find somebody isolated, that could be the difference maker. But Supermassive are playing around this possibility. Fab Fabulous has really been the only one off on his own. And he's the Shen. He can do that. He absolutely can. And ultimately, a lot of the early pressure that we've been seeing, whilst we sit there and we can highlight how good Levi has been throughout this whole tournament, Optimus has played a big part in it as well. And now that he's on the Syndra, he lost his own lane at level one. Levi repaired it for him and made it a bit better. 
but it still he doesn't have the pressure. He's in a lane where the Echo can control the minion waves just as well as him. And the most important part is that he roams, that he affects the map. But every time that he tries to, he's against the teleporting member of an Echo. He'll always be there just that little bit sooner. He can't kill Naru, can't pressure him out of lane. Always stays healthy, stays at full health. Everything that they want to do revolves around starting it like this. And they turn it right on around. He goes in, Protobelt onto Optimus, turns for Levi. Snaps back, power is unleashed. Fab Fabulous had his ultimate cancelled, and that is the difference maker as Levi gets a kill. Stark throws out the keg, prevents the ultimate coming out from Fab Fabulous, so it does exactly what is required of him, and that is how you counter the Shenners. That's a low health Dumbledore with an ultimate use, but let's pretend that never happened. We're talking about a five bottom lane. I just really just spent a fair bit of time saying that's how Gigabyte Marines start making plays. Super massive, pressuring mid lane turret. Speaking of making plays right now, it's Stonemage that's caught out for just a second, dodges the strangle thorns, teleports, coming in for Fab Fabulous. They are doubling down, looking for Slay, blowing him away as Stonemage gets the collateral damage. Teleport canceled once again. Fab Fabulous <laughs> is just having a hard time against Stark right now, but he's able to 1v1 for just a second. I mean, the teleport pressure was also enough anyway. Just teleporting there, if it was tanky minion, you know, everything still works out fine. Zyte not flash ultimate. Massive amount of work coming out of him right there. This is the second time that we've seen him utilize that. Sucks just trying to help the rest of his map by preventing teleports from happening. As we get to see this one as prevention number one. And here is going to be round two. No big barrel this time around, but still able to do something. Oh, wait, no, we're back to the regular. Yeah, we're I got huge pyro. I thought he still had it. Not a montage, don't uh, worry. Well, we might get a few of those after the series is concluded. 15 minutes in, though. It's been a lower action game because Supermassive been trying to hold it off, and they've been the ones making the big plays. Still, Gigabyte Marines got some fight in them. They were able to take down Naru. And Fab Fabulous wasn't able to come to his rescue. Naru yep. back on his teleport. Mid lane is still where Supermassive want to go. However, they couldn't quite finish off the turret. A lot invested to make it happen, but Gigabyte Marines hold. I think they're finding it a little bit too difficult to actually breach the walls of the 3v3 that stands in this middle lane for Supermassive. They send Naru to a side lane. Levi's going to work around Optimus, it feels like, and actually just find kills. The dynamic duo trying to be what it takes to lock it down and get a victory in this game. Whereas Supermassive, they'll just send the Graves to the Varus, to the Lulu, and start generating those picks, turn those picks into the game winners. Very difficult thing to do, but the Ash can influence the rest of the map while sitting mid lane. But if they see and they know that you don't have the ultimate, then you really do find yourself on Struggle Street against your 3v3 in the middle lane. Risky business. Looks like they're going for four in the mid, though. Optimus and Levi are heading back up there. They're holding hands. Sighton and Dumbledore, if they get caught out, this could start to be the tower push, but they're going to have some help. Arrow's on. There is the arrow. Instant wild growth. Levi trying to shred through the rest of the health bar, and it's going to be Optimus that manages to finish it off here as Stonemage dodges, throws out the collateral damage, but the rest of the Gigabyte Marines are able to absorb it between the four of them. Big Scout of the Week dodged out by Stonemage and Dumble Doge, but now it looks like it is going to be tower unless they can turn it right back around. In comes the Shen Fab Fabulous. They were stopped up for just a second thanks to Archie. Just off with the taunt as well. Looks like everything gets diffused because Stark doesn't want to take part in this either. He may just hang around hover the area, but there's no real value to be seen just yet. However, big fight from the Gigabyte Marines. Still the pressure continues mid. Massive will not give this one up. Zynot's back off the fountain. However, the wave's already shredded. Nobody's going to be getting towers just yet. Could be in for a long siege back and forth, Rusty. Potentially so, and whoever breaks that middle lane, you'd expect to be the ones with the big advantage. Just being able to open up the map that little bit further. They are continuing with the 1-3-1 one, one here, though. Supermassive are adamant that this is their way into this game. Avoid the fighting, pull the Gigabyte Marines apart. Rip them across the map, separate them, break up their duos. Yeah, there's always danger, though, of Levi. They get that isolation damage. Hard to deal with, but to be fair, when you have a Shen on your team, are you ever truly isolated? You know what's hard to ha get past as well as a tier match Shen who's never going to die because both <laughs> mid laner and top laner have magic damage. The wave clear as well out of Naru just means that you don't fight him, you're just fighting minions the entire time. There is not a lot of answers, honestly, especially with not having a teleport on their mid laner or no map movements. That's just a Syndra with Ignite. The kill pressure is there against the Echo. You have to say it's not really there against the Shen. And so their lane assignments are important, but most importantly, not just lane assignments, 
how Optimus rotates. Does Levi come and help him, unlock him like they have been in the past, or can Optimus just clear the wave and leave? Because as it stands, with the Drake being up in five seconds, their lane assignments are perfect where the teleports don't matter because one's on cooldown and they're both near the Drake, which is where everyone will look. That's where you gotta play around it right now. Levi and Optimus still holding hands as the blue buff gets finished off. Archie there clearing the vision away. Super massive. No, this is going on though, but it's a very important drag in the mountain once again. We really haven't had too many drakes and people don't want to fight over as Naro goes in and has to chrono break out as Levi was dishing the damage. Stone Mage and Dumble Doge a little bit late in the party. Yeah, Levi Dumbledore. level 11 does a lot of work. Needs to be respected as it stands. And those inklings of pressure, just getting rid of the Echo Ultimate means that team fighting is just 10 times easier for the Gigabyte Marines. You can actually assassinate him. It's always a possibility. Although Fab Fabulous has Stand United off cooldown, Super Massive looking to take advantage of the small window here to finish off mid turn. But Archie's coming in. They don't know that there's no backup right now. Optimus is going in under Naru and he unleashes the power right behind the tower. Optimus tanking a few shots, but Levi will tag his way in. Looks like we could be in for a tower trade here. A few more minions. It's not going to be quite enough to get the done, but it's close. Stark's also rotating towards this middle lane. They may not look towards defending the turret, more so going for a kill at the same time. Levi now about to rotate up. They are looking. Sight not. Fab Fabulous has got the shield on top and the tower's gonna fall and Stark is just able to get outside of the chains of corruption. Actually, body slams pretty much at the same missile speed as the arrows, so does get out barely without getting connected from the Varus Salty. The Gregor Salty was burnt, however, and the turrets were traded in the end, so you're absolutely correct. This is what we get to see in the bottom lane, though. Naru, no ultimate. No Zonius, just a proto belt, and it takes too long to lay down the parallel conversion. You'd have to say a little bit of a mistake overall from the Echo. Optimus just playing like clockwork, presses yeah. his R button, makes sure there's some balls on the ground. He walks right iron. I mean, tower damage or no, he does not seem to care. So three kills on the board right now, and after the start of the game, where he ends up dying at bottom lane in Hib Tower, Looks like we might see a few more oopsies, but <laughs> I don't I'm know how the is here, mind. to be honest with you. I don't know how he got this far into a game. He lost lane at level one. <laughs> That's when the rest of your team just starts spamming question mark pings on you? I would have. Yeah, well, he certainly redeemed himself. But he's looking. Got the taunt on to Stark, but in comes Slay. There was no keg for Stark, so it's all about pressuring the turret. It's like a clap. So made. Oh, he gets the taunt off. Stark in tower range has to flash the heal burn by Slay now. Hard commit from Gigabyte Marines. In comes yeah, they, they get the damage before the rest of Super Massive can get there. A double kill for Levi. And Stark barely living, as is Gragas with the passive. Gets some health back from the body slam. Turret now being pressured. Naru is bottom. Has teleport just about to be available again, but they're just playing a game of trades. And guess who's getting the wins from this one? The crowd knows. Well, Supermassive might have lost a few members, lost the top tower, but at least they get the inner here. Unfortunately, it looks like they might lose out on one, except for Zaitnot and Dumbledore being there to clear the rest of the way. But Gigabyte Marines will be able to back off, keeping the gold lead in their favor. And you know, your expectations coming into this third game with how slow it started, keeping the Marines away from all of the kills, and the way level one also started, you'd say, well, Supermassive, it's their game to lose. Well, if it was their game to lose, how are the Gigabyte Marines actually out rotating them, getting dives onto the top laner and doing all of these things with absolutely no counterplay from their opponents? Fab Fabulous, pretty much on an island. His island is deserted from everybody that he ever knew. And he's just meeting all of these monsters coming up there to kill him yeah. constantly. And he can't get out, he can't get any help because he's the one with the teleport, with the Stand United. Can't use it on yourself. Naru, the only other one who could get there and he was busy pushing on the bottom side. So now you have three kills on the jungler, three kills on the mid laner. They both got huge kill pressure. And These guys the are gonna be big them. monsters. And they're exactly the monsters that need those kills. As the one with giant claws starts off for Drake. I don't know if there'll be any counterplay here available unless they just look for a steal. Naru's up top. Looks like this one's given up here. It's gonna be Drake equalized. But they're, they're cool with that because again, the turret trade will be something they look towards in the top lane. If they actually just pressure that one, the Mountain Drake's nice, but that means it's one apiece anyway, and Super Mash should go for top lane. Oh, but you can see Fab Fabulous playing a little skittish right now. We realize they're actually right, teleporting they for top. him. Wow, they are going to try and cut off Naru. That's that tower's deep. not falling fast enough. Yeah, but that teleport was so deep, Naru might be able to navigate his way through. We'll see. He had all Ash 
Oh boy, throws down the Convergence, goes in. Oh, he's gonna try to make this a 2v2, but all of a sudden, Archie comes in. 3v2 right now, snaps back to dodge out as much damage as he possibly can. Turns in for Optimus, don't they? Is he's in. tagging in right now. Let's see if they can get the pickup. Whoa, Whoa, he gets knocked back in a round. What the hell was that as Levi comes in and all of a sudden this party up top does in. not end. Side not trying to be the hero, getting himself one. Naru gets another. Supermassive coming up ahead in the two for one trade. And slowly but assuredly, everybody rocks up to the top lane. But as you're saying, Supermassive get the slight edge on this one. It also means the pressure towards the top lane structure is the name of the game. We get to watch how this one unfolds one more time. This is what the Shen's able to do. Good stun, denying him out of the parallel convergence. Now, Archie also able to help his team Optimus walking into the Zara Ultimate to try and prevent that Fabulous from doing damage. But. That's the combo. The so Stone Mage gets knocked in. Good flash to try and get himself out of safety. Overexertion, however, from the Marines to make sure that the Graves goes down, resulting everybody on their team falling into a very uh, desperate position and dying. Yep. Party don't start till Zaitna walks in, and he gets pretty big ultimate, allowing them to finish things off. Naru taking a bat. And he was there well before Slay. There we go. 25 minutes in, though. It's still a goal lead for Gigabyte Marines. But all the same, we're seeing Supermassive able to tangle with this team fight comp. They definitely are. That one dude with Thunderstick, you need to just chill out for a second, mate. Nah, man, they excited them we're in Sao Paulo right now. Yeah, I don't blame them. I don't blame them either. This is definitely a pretty hype series. No matter who wins this one, it's definitely going to be solid to see them on the big stage in Rio. But we're still a ways away from that one, one to one. Who's going to grab the momentum? Super massive after a big, long losing streak, as you said, starting with the Flash Wolf series, have really found a way to thunder back in. Now, as this game progresses as well, we have to remember that the damage that comes out of Archie when he's playing this Zyra starts to ramp up just that little bit more. Of course, he's going towards the Locket build currently. But after that, if he does choose to go the Leandre Zyra, go the AP Zyra, and there's pretty much four carries on their side, whereas Supermassive, they've got the tank, he'll always be a tank. Dumbledore is definitely not going to be a carry. His damage is okay at best. So there is some genuine threats as you scale towards the later game stages from the Gigabyte Marine. Supermassive are all about protecting their big carries. The Shen ultimate, the Lulu ultimate, mm -hmm. just going onto the primary targets that are being focused from what is a pick composition primarily out of the Marines. Yeah. Naru? Really... Starting to ramp up a little bit, but he's only on two and a half items right now as he has the Seeker's Arm Guard working his way towards Mazanius. But the Lich Bane certainly helps him in the side push. This is the game they want to play because they know yep. that Naru can deal with Optimus in a one-on-one -on -one at the very least. And he's got an insurance policy, right? The Chrono Break gives him out of a bad situation. But there's always the threat that Levi's around. Yeah, it's not about dealing with Optimus. It's about making sure that Optimus is the one dealing with Naru. That is effectively how they're going to be playing this one out is vision control, wave control, if all of the above goes towards Naru, then Optimus is stuck defending. One of them has teleport. So as we start to play the Baron game, actually you would say lane assignments should put Stark bottom, but he doesn't even have teleport. No, we'll get it back up soon enough, but for the time being, Supermassive are definitely the much more mobile of the squads. Zaitnaut and Stomage in the middle. Naru's actually coming up, but Stark lays a barrel for cover. Parallel Convergence oh, no. in. Naru, ooh, Stark intercepts, but all of a sudden Fab Fabulous stand united on top of him, and Optimus is gonna get the kill, but not before Fab Fab can come right on in. He taunts, gets it on a few no numbers to go. Here, but he's isolated nowhere at all, and Stark is even going to flash slam onto Zaitnaut. Two quick kills by the Gigabyte Marines. And the immediate QSS and flash out of Zaitnaut to get himself to safety means that he's now at risk of dying under this turret if somebody catches him with a stun. A lot of respect needing to be shown, especially against a Syndra with the mid-range stuns there. So structures drop, plain and simple. That was, if nothing else, adventurous from Naru. Acknowledging the team made the decision. He had the Shen ultimate there to protect him. There's only so much protect protection that a Shen ult can actually achieve. Yeah, I mean, he was lucky that Fab Fabulous even was able to get the channel completed because he went down the moment it finished ticking. And as a result, Gigabyte Marines get two kills and not one, but two towers on top of it. That gold lead going 3,000 plus in their favor. And even Stark's gonna be able to push side lanes and what do you know, Rusty? T minus one minute until an Infernal Drake hits the map. Yeah, it just seems to me that there is no such thing as a Cloud Drake throughout the past few days of this tournament. Another Infernal, two mountains before that. We jokingly said it's a Gigabyte Marines game, and so these are the Drakes that come up, but it's no longer a joke, because it's just true. 
Like, it just does not stop. Yep. Playing on this patch. They have started the Baron. Baron's up right now. 29 minutes. They have some damage, but this is in full vision here. Levi's around. He can do the smite steal. We've seen some highlight plays from him. You know they're fighting for this. Oh, yeah, they've got it. Fab Fabulous tanking most of the Baron damage. Teleport completed. And that Ash Arrow misses. But the Ash... I mean, so Stark is here, right? They forced the teleport out of it. Ash Arrow not hitting was their avenue to actually engage. But, they but back Shen off. was there, so he didn't need to teleport. Naru was there, so he didn't need to teleport. Now they have two compared to zero of their opponents, which means Gigabyte Marine's next response means they have to be grouped at all times and the side waves can get out of control. But Supermassive started the Baron fight without control of the bottom wave of minions. They just had everybody in the area. So that's potentially enough minions to take out a turret unless someone goes down to defend it. But Dara might have to spend his teleport to get involved in this fight. Levi sent out the Void Spikes to keep everybody back. The rest of Gigabyte Marines looking They're to looking collapse. They're looking to collapse actually very nicely. Force them out means a free Infernal Drake on vision, potentially. Yeah, nice play from Levi and the rest of the Marines here. Honestly, huge deal when you're trying to get those quick picks. That extra AD and AP is going to come in handy. It goes the way of Gigabyte Marines now, 30 minutes on the clock. Aiding them a little bit further with some combat stats. As you can see, bonus AD and AP. And with the team composition they've compiled for themselves, Azira even as the support will relish in the fact that there is a little bit more attack damage and ability power for the whole team, particularly AP for her. So far, so good from the Gigabyte Marines actually turning around an early game deficit, making it a mid-game lead as we're cresting over towards late game. Yeah. Uh, I have to think about how this series has gone so far. I mean, game number one was Gigabyte Marines just crushing it at 24 minutes, but Supermassive liked that longer one. They made it a little last a lot longer at 36. But now we're starting to get into that late game territory. The Syndra is still terrifying. The Kha'Zix hasn't died and he's stacking up kills. Stark's also starting to get some damage, a little bit more slowdown with the Iceborne Gauntlet. If we take level one out of the equation, Optimus is 502. <laughs> <laughs> So doing quite well from that point onwards. I think that's one of the times you uh, can definitely mess with the numbers a little bit. That one doesn't count. Everybody gets a derp. But this is how it now continues to play out. If Naru's pressuring bottom, he has the teleport. Shen also pressuring top lane. It means that the play has to be forced. And so in the battle of making teleports happen, here we go. Will they actually teleport? Will they collapse in? That fabulous. Oh, he's going to get locked up. But there's a teleport now. Fab Fab's dead. Get caught. Flashed over, followed by Levi. And that isolation damage was huge. The Ashero comes out, but it doesn't matter and at all. the teleport was cancelled from Naru. He's actually committing to bottom lane. You can buy Marine should not be doing this. Baron, they need to send somebody to defend it right now. Oh, they're going to try to have their cake and eat it too, but look at what Naru is able to get done right now. This Baron is going low, but it's already the base being broken open by Naru. Optimus is backed away, but Stomage is here. Could be a spine steal, but all of a sudden, Gigabyte oh Marine turned for the fight. Gets the barrel buff off, but Stark is tanking. Three members of damage, Sight not caught in the rest. The Wild Growth, just enough to keep him alive, but Stark is going to stay up as well. One more auto is all Stomage needed, but he can't find it. Fire down Play. by Slay. Double Doge going down, and all four members of the Gigabyte Marines staying alive. Naru going in, looking for Optimus. Who goes golden? Oh my the power God. for the ace. I, I really want to see a replay in that 1v1 as well because in the bottom left corner of your screen, it was like the most epic little trade in the smallest window possible. Fab Fabulous is going to deny the Baron. They have no health to their name, but they want a team fight and they want in bottom lane. However, the inhibitor falls. So with a 6k lead, if they can't force this Baron immediately, then they really are still on the back foot. They have no choice but to try, it seems like. Or at least they're forcing themselves to try. Well, Fab Fabulous, that fight was so long, he comes all the way back up, gets stunned up by Optimus. Gigabyte Marines, you don't often see a team get five kills for nothing and be still on the, on the back foot, but they at least get the Baron off of this so they can start to defend their bottom lane. They get out with everybody alive. That was something close. else. That was very close to being a very bad thing. I think it's safe to say at this stage, Pyra, because that was, if that inhibitor fell down and they didn't get the Baron, then those minions would push. That is the lane on the map that is the furthest away from the Baron buff. And so if you actually lose that inhibitor, it takes the longest time to rotate. Stark would have to be stuck down there. His wave clear is okay, but not against super minions. It takes an awful long time to actually get that done. But he has the teleport back up. Everything's coinciding in 
actually the most perfect way that it could be for the Marines because they have a teleport advantage. Effectively, it'll be matched by a Shen ultimate only, but Naru can't split push anymore. He now has to group, but he can't clear Baron minions very well. Super massive. They kind of need to engage or find a pick. Yeah. Definitely need to do it as fast as they can, but it's Baron buff versus super minions in bottom. The rest of the lane's not so lucky, and Levi is on the front lines here. Getting the wards cleared away, that's going to be dangerous to deal with. He's had a big impact in a lot of these fights, a lot of these skirmishes. But he had to get some credit to Slay, Optimus as well. Yes, yeah, Slay Having fantastic really well. games. His team fighting, navigating the last fight that we saw in particular. Being able to stay healthy enough, confident enough to move forwards against the Graves with little to no health to his name. Yeah, that was, that was insane actually. Stark, solo with... The rest of these Baron Empowered Minions able to finish off the tower. The rest of Gigabyte Marines just rotating around, hovering inside this jungle and keeping super massive in the dark. It's difficult to fight into this team. One face check can mean the end of it. I can't believe Optimus had two rotations of his ultimate off as well, using it again in the bottom lane to seal the deal. Oh yeah, cooldown on that thing is absurd at times. It's now the siege begins. It's all right, bye. Oh, okay. Yep. There was a Lulu there once, now it's just a blue hat. For another 35 seconds, that's advantage Gigabyte Marines. Pushing on the bottom, pushing on the mid. The siege continues. They've got extra damage courtesy of that dragon, courtesy of the Baron Empowered Minions. Super massive, they're just getting cowed right now. They definitely are, and now with two people bottom, three mid, all of the inhibitors pressured at once. They're fighting, here we go. See if they can get the pick off on to Stark. It looks like the tower's gonna go down in the mid, but Levi goes in for Naru. Scout of the Week doesn't get the stun off. Naru has the shield from Fab That's Fabulous, one. but it's not enough to keep Stormage alive. And all of a sudden, they pull the trigger, a double kill for the Ash, and That's the rest game. of the team cleans up. That's it, Rusty. Ace you buy Marines. They're just gonna go straight forwards and make this two to one. Easy peasy, no one around to defend. Double Doge is coming back up, but c'est la vie. And sayonara, Gigabyte Marines getting themselves one more win on the board, two to one. It is match point, and they are looking for Rio. Much more convincing mid to late game phase here from the Marines. But the early game still something that could be looked towards. However, with match point now, with a two to one lead in the series, we're still seeing different strategies, different ideologies out of the team. They actually had more than one thing up their sleeve prepared for today. Well, when you're on the back foot after one game, you have to start bringing things out. Once again, Supermassive now have to turn it around. They didn't get crushed nearly as hard. It was a lot of oh, trades. Yeah. We could see that they could tango with the Marines, yep. but they're gonna have to do it again to bring it to game four. Or yeah, game five, I should I say. I mean, for me, looking at it right, it was the early game was still sound from them. They slowed the pace of the game down to where they want it to be. And then when they tried to one through one, it was honestly just execution mistakes. If they try and just one more way of bottom lane, don't get forced into fights or don't force the fight so aggressively. A couple of the Baron baits, it was good getting teleports out, but none of it was really perfect. None of it was good enough to beat the Gigabyte Marines just outright in the game. And all it takes yeah. is that one mistake for them to get a victory. And you have to start thinking about taking away Optimus' Syndra, taking away Levi's Kha'Zix, and we'll see what happens. Now, for an in-depth look at that game, we're going to send it over to our analysts. I think the biggest crux there, Pyro, was Ivern being taken off the board. Looked much easier to kill people, as it turns out, on the side of Gigabyte Marines when there's no Ivern shields to worry about blowing. <laughs> and not only that, I like the adaptation. Um, the Ash to start fights like works very well in the same principle. If you don't only have one pick to take in first rotation for Supermassive, suddenly they have to adapt things, pick the virus for themselves, which is a fine pick, but I think the engaged potential on top of that for Gigabyte Marines makes them difficult to deal with. I think the um, important thing to remember is that the thing about the, the virus bans early on is, as you rightly were saying in the previous post game, um, you, you limit yourself, mm -hmm. right? You're basically saying they can pick Ash and there's nothing else. But the other added factor of taking Ash is you take it off of Slay. Yeah. And what we've seen is that as an individual, he seems to have a very limited champion pool in what he's good at. And we know that his three best ADs at the moment seem to be Ziggs, Jin, and Ash. So the fact that they left Lulu open and they effectively said to the enemy team, look, we're gonna give this to you in order to guarantee that our AD carries on something that he's comfortable on, it hurt them in the early game, 
but overall it made it worked out in their favor. And the priority on comfort picks really did pay off as we moved later into the game. But the one thing that I do like is Devaris and the Lulu being set up for Supermassive for the first time in the series did give them a winning bottom lane. We can take a look at that one for zero happened early on in the game. This is a solid start for the team that we haven't seen so far in the series. And there is some of the utility coming from the Varus. It allows them to capitalize on Slay, who, you know, has had kind of questionable laning phases at times. Yes, they've been ahead, but a lot of that has been when Levi is there. When they're on their own, they don't seem quite so solid. It's one of those back and forth ones. There have been mistakes on both sides, bot lane, but that's one that Supermassive were able to punish. I think the matchup is is extremely difficult as well for mm. uh, an Ash and a Zyra because um, Varus he naturally has a, a fair amount of poke, and in terms of the all in, he's a little bit stronger. But then when you're f supported by a Lulu as well, that mitigates a lot of the Zyra damage as well. So he's he has the ability to force those all in fights, and I also think he had a level advantage when they actually made that happen too. So uh, the whole play from the Supermassive bottom lane was good, and it's nice to see them throughout the series improving that two versus two because at the start of the day, yeah. it was bad. They got destroyed. <laughs> like they got destroyed was... in a winning lane matchup yes. and they lost that anyway. And then they were able to redeem themselves later on. So it's it's nice to be able to see the Zeit knot that we were expecting more of uh, f coming out of the group stages of, uh, of the planes. Now the steady progression, this is the most even game I think we've seen throughout the oh, series. Sure. Of course, there was a turning point in the middle of the game, but we'll get to that momentarily. So much parity in the mid-game team fights. Do you feel like there's something that Supermassive could have done as a team to, to more solidify their lead in the mid-game? Because they were doing fine for the vast majority of those mid-game plays. It felt like they were in control for a decent portion of it, but consistently we see Gigabyte Marines finding fights to get back. And a lot of them came from catching Naru first. Like, Naru had a, a few number of deaths, whether it was out on the side lane, whether it was with the rest of the team. If Naru's not there, suddenly Supermassive look a lot less uh, solid at their team fighting. We've seen what Naru can do when he's ahead, but it was good focus that really led to a lot of these fights. I think you have to remember that the Gigabyte Marines are a team that's naturally good at skirmishing. They mm -hmm. they have this tendency to be able to find these uh, 2v2s or the 3v3s or even the, the 2v3s where they can just straight up get the outplay. And it's just a style that suits them very well. And that's because they're finding pockets of vision which they can look to punish you with. And Levi is the type of jungler that will just be in really weird places around the map at all times. When you think you're safe to push, all of a sudden the Kha'Zix issue just runs down mid lane and then he dives on top of you and you're like, that's not how a Kha'Zix should gank me. And then you end up in a really awkward situation. So I think that it's praise uh, to Levi, but it's also just the start of the Gigabyte Marines that Supermassive weren't properly respecting. And the fact is they had a great one through one composition that they could have properly utilized, but because they weren't pushing waves and setting up deep vision like you need to in order to have the Echo and the Shen properly do the apply the pressure that they need to, uh, that gave windows for Gigabyte to, to punish. And of course the biggest window, a high risk play coming in from the Gigabyte Marines. Baron coming in at 32 minutes, that's gonna be our Acer replay for this one. And as you guys run us through this, I mean just a very confident play. And this is where there's two, de two different fights that the Gigabyte Marines take. And you can see that like they're already taking the Baron and Naru, his focus is on the inhibitor. So the rest of the Marines say, okay, he can't join us in time. We have the numbers advantage. In goes Stark on this Gragas, gets the crowd control down. And from there, they're low health bars, but at the same time, look at how well they balance the rest of this fight. They drop back when they're low, put the damage out when they can. And from there, Gigabyte Marines are able to just take both sides of that fight. And I think it highlights one thing for me, and that is, Supermassive need to get stuck off of this Gragas. Yes, he can be punished by a Rumble, but if you play tank versus tank, he just has a lot of impact later on into the game after going neutral from the beginning. And I really want to emphasize how, uh, as you were saying, it was played so immaculately from the Gigabyte Marines because if that goes wrong, it goes <laughs> really wrong. Like, they were all so low in, in the sense that if, if a single member died, they all end up collapsing. So you end up getting three to four kills on the side of Supermassive and a bottom lane inhibitor. And that would have just spelled disaster for the Gigabyte Marines. So the fact that they knew exactly when to force the fight and the way in which they positioned in order to keep all of their members alive just you have to give credit to the team in the, in the way in which they play. Now, of course, at this point, two and one in the favor of Gigabyte Marines. Vettius, you're on track for prediction. Stress not ah. quite there. Call you guys out a little bit. Stress, I want to know what, what hasn't been happening here on the side of Supermassive. What is the difference between what you assumed would happen or what you thought might happen here and what's actually happening uh, from what we're seeing? So I, I think the one thing Supermassive haven't done is the second half of what TSM did on the adaptation, which was re revolving around the Gragas. I think they, they've done the bottom lane section of taking away the Ziggs quite effectively and up until this game had the Ash for themselves, which worked. But Hornsus started tearing stuff stuck apart 
That's what Fab Fabulous needs to do. Fab Fabulous needs to go in and say, okay, I'm going to play a matchup that maybe you aren't experienced in. Maybe it's something with a carry against the Gragas that can actually put him back in the lane because Gragas, if you're playing tank versus tank, or if Gragas is moderately ahead, he'll come out and have massive teamfight impact. And that is what the Gigabyte Marines are using very well. A part of me just wants them to leave LeBlanc open because mm -hmm. I think that, like, when looking back at their series versus TSM, right, like in the very first two games, they were banning LeBlanc on the second rotation, okay? Mm -hmm. And it was something that the Gigabyte Marines didn't seem to have a huge emphasis on getting early. Now, uh, Gigabyte Marines have a tendency to go towards red side, so I don't think you leave it open because if it is, they're very lightly Well, to interestingly take it. enough, they have now chosen blue side. Oh, so, so how does that side. affect it? So, I mean, then, that, then maybe that's even better, right? Like, because. If you blind pick a LeBlanc, then there are many answers to it. You, you could even go for a Cassadin. Yeah. Uh, you can go for a Rise. Like, there, are, there are plenty of options out there. And I think that maybe you just take that gamble and you just ban away the, the Gragas. Yep. And so you can then guarantee a strong bottom lane. You have push in the top, as you rightly said. You get a more favorable matchup. And then you just hope that Naru can keep up to Optimus and his ability to play LeBlanc. Definitely the pressure on. Match point now, though, as Gigabyte Marines are one game away from securing their spot in MSI groups. We're going to find out if they can close out the series against Supermassive right after the break. Timewinder, this is awkward. Play. Where are you going to go? All right. Got First here. Blood. All right. Yeah. We're on the board. Coming in for Fab Fabulous. They are doubling down, looking for Slay, blowing him away. Hard commit from Gigabyte Marines. In here they, go. they get the damage before the rest of Supermassive can get there. A double kill for Levi. One more auto is all Stone Mage needed, but he can't find it. Fire down by Slay. Slay. Double Doge going down, and all four members of the Gigabyte Marines staying alive. Nara going in, looking for Optimus. Who goes golden? Oh my the power God. for the ace. But it's not enough to keep Stone Mage alive, and all of a sudden, they pull the trigger, a double kill for the Ash, and That's the rest game. of the team cleans up. That's it, Rusty. Gigabyte Marines, they're just going to go straight forwards and make this two to one.